So the second talk of the session is from a group of researchers uh, from Peking University and the University of Science and Technology Beijing, uh, Longyan University, uh, on fusing direct manipulations into functional programs. And Xin Zhang will be our speaker. Hello everyone, I'm Xin from Peking University. Now I will introduce our work fusing direct manipulations into functional programs. Live programming enables developers to see real-time output changes while coding. Look at the left-hand program. After modifying the variable W to 20, the output rectangles changes in Im immediately without re-executing the program. However, we can only read the output. A further step is bidirectional li live programming. It allows developers to edit the output and reflect those changes to the source program. For instance, we manipulate the rectangle's size to twice and reflect it back to the left program. The variable W automatically changes to 20. So in that way, we run this updated program again, we will get the rectangle just manipulated. So there are two types of bidirectional live programming systems. One is state-based systems. They are only concerned about the updated output snapshots. For, uh, suppose that we desire a yellow rectangle. The first option is to directly modify the colors and uh, the second option is to delete the old one and draw a new yellow rectangle. So a state-based systems just to see the same result of, the, of these two operations. So both operations will result in the left hand the same updated program. The other is operation-based systems. They consider more information about the manipulation processes for instance, directly modify the color will result in uh, directly modify the color parameter in the program. In contrast, deleting and then drawing will result in the deletion and insertion of the list elements. So as you can see, operation-based systems can uh, offer developers more control over program modifications. There are several existing operation-based systems. A notable system is Sketch and Sketch by Revit Choose Group. Although they provide a series of powerful direct manipulations for SVG graphics, uh, like alignment and grouping, these manipulations are code sensitive through trace links between source program and its output. They perform hard-coded program modifications for each direct manipulation, making it hard to extend. Besides, users need to understand the source program when they use those direct manipulations. So it's less user-friendly for UI designers uh, who may don't know programming knowledge and making it unsuitable for Programmer, uh, the collaboration between programmers and UI designers. Therefore, what we want to do is to separate direct manipulations from the source program. That's why we designed a delta language to express direct manipulations. Then we define a kind of fusion that can propagate a delta written in the delta language into the proper positions in the source program. We call this approach code insensitive because if developers desire to extend more customized manipulations, they can use these delta languages to write them. They don't need to care about any uh, program modifications. Additionally, direct manipulations are now defined for output values rather than the source program. So um, UI designers, uh, can only focus on the virtual output, making it suitable for collaborations between the 
programmers, and UI designers. To sum up, our main contribution is to present a new operation-based framework for BLP systems called FuseDM. Specifically, first we design a simple and expressive delta language, which is simple to be fused to the source program and expressive to encode common direct manipulations. Second, we present a fusion algorithm that can propagate the direct manipulations into the general purpose functional programs and embed it into the proper positions. So uh, we also prove its correctness, which means the program fused with a direct manipulation can run again to get the output that is applied by that direct manipulation, right? So third, we implement an application, a prototype SVG editor. We have successfully worked out 14 non-trivial benchmarks. Okay, this video shows creating a letter using our tool, starting from a blank code. On the left is a code editor, on the right is an output canvas. Oh, let's start. So we can draw and copy some graphics and connect the vertices of them. Group them, align them, and make them equidistant. So finally, we get the left generated code that can produce the, exactly this desired graphic. Now let's start to explore the delta language. This is a subset of deltas denoted as dv that act like functions or operations on values. Let's begin with simple constructs. The, most, uh, the simplest one is identity, which keeps the value unchanged. These are the arithmetic deltas. For addition, if we apply plus n2 to n1, then we get n1 plus n2. It's easy, right? <laughs> Multiplications are similar, so if we want to change 5 to 10, there are two options. Well, the first one is to plus 5. The second is multiply two. These are two different options will perform different program modifications. Furthermore, we have deltas for data, data structures. Take tuples, for example, applying a tuple delta will uh, to, the, to a pair of V1 and V2 means applying the, these two subdeltas to the subvalues uh, respectively and combine these updated the subvalues again. We also have compositions where we apply delta 1 and delta 2 to the value in turn. So for lists, we design a special delta called list folding to update list elements from left to right in a recursive way. For instance, we want to add one to each even index elements. So we set the accumulator as zero and write the de derive and the two delta functions in this way. This list folding will produce plus one for each even index elements and plus zero for each all the index elements. Finally, we obtain two, two, and four. Note that this list folding is, can update lists at an arbitrary length, it is different from this constant one. You can imagine that in program modification, this list folding will insert a recursive function while this constant delta uh, uses a more hard-coded way. So actually, they represent two different modification intentions. We can even create relationships between subvalues through constraint introduction. For, exa for example, uh, we want to make the second element of this tuple to twice its first element. And we can write the delta in this way. The main part is a tuple, a tuple delta where id keeps the first element unchanged and the second part repl replaces the original value b with an entirely new value to x so what is x 
it's a newly introduced variable defined in the deltas prefix, and so it, it point, points to the first element. Uh, through this constraint introduction, we achieve the result a pair of A and a 2A. This constraint introduction is different from directly replacing the second element with a constant value 2a because the constraint introduction implies an underlying relationship. <coughs> so uh, we use our delta language to encode a series of common direct manipulations listed in this table, um, such as copy group and equidistant operations to demonstrate the expressiveness of our language. If you are interested in the details, you can see our paper. Now we have the delta language. The next step is to consider how to fuse the direct manipulations into source programs and where are the proper positions to embed the direct manipulations. In bidirectional live programming, developers do not want a too big modification to the program because it's hard and time consuming for them to understand that. So we pursue local and small modifications. Specifically, we try to propagate the delta into the deepest substructure of the program, such as constants, implying that the modification is local and small. I will show what local and small mean. Consider fusing this left delta into the right program. We call the left solution non-local modification because it just puts the delta outside of the whole program. This is really not what developers want. In contrast, we call the right solution a local modification because it propagates the delta through pr the program structure and decompose it into smaller ones to be applied to substructures of the program, uh, making the modification to be, uh, to be local and small. So this is what our fusion algorithm can achieve. I use a tree to represent the program and show the intuitive fusion algorithm. The fusion follows call by value evaluation steps starting from the program root. It propagates the delta through several function applications and decompose the delta when encountering data structures. But the propagation stops here because the variable n is updated by inconsistent deltas. And this is exactly what we define the proper positions. So we embed multiply 2 to the left n to get n multiply 2. And embed the identity to the right n, which is still n. And finally, we get the left hand updated program. These are the formulation of the fusion algorithm. We prove its correctness. You can find more details in our paper. To demonstrate the effectiveness and the useful, uh, usefulness of our fusion algorithm, we implement 14 benchmark examples from Sketch and Sketch using our two. Two videos have been prepared. One is a tutorial and another shows the detailed processes of implementing 14 benchmark examples. They can be found in our artifact package. In summary, we have three contributions. First, a simple but expressive delta language. Second, a fusion algorithm that can propagate direct manipulations into proper positions of the source programs. Third, an application with designing 14 non-trivial benchmark examples. That's all. Thanks for listening. Hi, Xinjiang. Thanks for the nice talk. Um, I'm curious if you offer any guarantees in the fusion algorithm for the minimality of, of the in incremental change. Like, um, if you make a change, uh, two changes in parts of the program that are far apart, uh, maybe... Sorry, can you speak louder? Uh, yes. Um, uh, 
is there any guarantees basically about the minimality of, of the incremental change that you have to recompute? Uh, in, uh, the first word is what? The, um, do you find the smallest possible change or are there perhaps smaller ones um, uh, that the fusion algorithm uh, m might abstract? Uh, okay, I'll use this diagram to show it. Um, so for the local and the small definition, we mean, um, we just mean somewhere we cannot continue to propagate it. So we think it's the deepest substructure. And uh, uh, the other options, because they are far from uh, the substructure, but we, we just define the deepest in our algorithm, not in any strategies. Yes. Yeah. So there is somewhat no 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 formal definition or no mm -hmm. yeah. for the small mean. Thank you. Okay. Hi. Uh, thanks for the talk. Um, oh, I'm over here. Oh, hi. hi. Uh, <laughs> Uh, I had a question about, uh, I was wondering if you could uh, elaborate a little bit on how you infer uh, the, how you infer the deltas uh, from the user's manipulations. Like if I were to drag the corner by 10 pixels, how do you know if that's a plus 10 or a times two? Um, and just maybe for more complex cases as well, like list manipulations, uh, how much do you rely on user input versus uh, some kind of inference algorithm? Uh, actually, it's not inference. Uh, it's the responsibility to for the two developers. Uh, for example, if uh, there are two UI interactions, if we click uh, multi, uh, multiply two, and uh, we think this is a delta that multiply two, and if uh, we directly drag the corner, we think it express a plus delta. We just use different UI interactions to express different deltas. Okay, thank you for the, for the very good talk. And my question is, uh, you mentioned something about the correctness of the algorithm. Uh, can we elaborate a bit more on that? Uh, what do you mean by correctness? Correctness means, um, so, so, you know, we fuse a direct manipulation into the program, right? And the correctness means the program fused with that direct manipulation wrong again to get the output, that is the original output being applied by that direct manipulation. Okay? Okay, let's thank the speaker again. <laughs>